Hey everyone, for this study we're going to be looking at the number of a man, which is 6. We're going to be looking at the number of perfection, which is 7. And we're also going to be looking at the number of the beast, which is the number of a man, 6, repeated 3 times. So let's go ahead and jump into our theme verses here. And the idea here is that we are walking and submitting to Christ every day. We are in His Spirit and we are growing in Him. Mark 10, 7, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, the two will become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just will live by faith. But if anybody draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So if you have died to self, you are alive to Christ. The two have become one flesh. There's no longer I, there's only Christ. You then please do not draw back, but to continue to grow in his love and in his spirit. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the study now. Six represents the number of a man. So let's look at some witnesses that back this up. Man was made on the sixth day, and he was given dominion. Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and have dominion over it the fish of the sea, birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the ground. And God saw everything that he had made. Indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And I want to say very briefly, this idea of having dominion, this was given to us by Christ. It is something that's very biblical, but when we start to hear things like the common good, which um, are saying the inherent right of nature to exist and not to be under, brought under the dominion of man, we have to closely evaluate those statements to see if they are true or if they are indeed false from the beast power. Okay, let's move on to another witness. The vision of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary provides another uh, evidence that six is the number of man. He is judging the people not under grace but under the law. Ezekiel 41, in the 25th year of our captivity, the beginning of the year, 10th day of the month, 14th year after the city was captured, the very same day the hand of the Lord was upon me. He took me there, the visions of God, he took me into the land of Israel, set me on a very high mountain, on it towards the south was something like the structure of a city. He took me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze. He had a line of flax and a measuring rod in his hand, and he stood in the gateway, and then jumping to verse 5. Now there was a wall, the wall represents the law, all around the outside of the temple. In the man's hand was a measuring rod six cubits long. So that measuring rod, it represents the man and the judgment of man through the law. All right, so let's go on to the last witness here. The number of a man also corresponds with the beast power, which I mentioned earlier, his kingdom and the judgment that is going to come upon him. One of the primary characteristics of the beast power is pride. And interestingly enough, one of the primary characteristics of the Laodicean church is also pride as well that we read about in Revelation 3.17. So Revelation 13.18, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 666. The number of a man repeated three times. All right, so let's go on and read about Nebuchadnezzar's experience as the beast. He was turned into the image of the beast because of his pride. Daniel 4.30, the king spoke, saying, Is this not great Babylon that I have built for the royal dwelling, for my mighty power, and for the honor of my majesty? This is the, And then we jump to Daniel's interpretation, verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is decree of the Most High, which has come upon my lord the king. They will drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times, seven times is six plus one, I just want to put that seed there, shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, 
and gives it to whomever he chooses. Okay, so that's the number six. Let's move on to the number seven, just one number away, but this number seven is associated with perfection. And this perfection actually bookends the Bible. So let's read about that in Genesis, as far as creation goes. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he had rested from his work which God had created and made. All right, let's jump to Revelation. Uh, Revelation 7, 1. After these things I saw four angels standing at four corners of the earth, looking holding the four winds of the earth, that they would should not blow on the earth, on the sea, and on any tree. I saw another angel ascend from the east, having the seal of the living God, and this is Christ. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth, the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed. 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So Revelation 7 is talking about the perfection of the 144,000 that they can, they're faultless before the throne of God and the Lamb. All right, so let's do a little bit of comparison here. 6 and 7, they're so close together, but alas, perfection is not in our grasp as humans. We are sinners, which has separated us from God. That is the wall. The chasm is deep and wide, and we're not able to keep the Ten Commandments. And Paul spoke extensively about this. Romans 7, 14. For we know the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, or human, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But that which I hate, that I do. Romans 3, 21. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 10. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. In John 8, 7. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her at first. Okay, so just as six is proximal to seven, Israel thought that dwelling next to Jesus was enough. Thus Israel is rightly represented by the number six. Is having a knowledge of God enough? The sanctuary brings this truth into focus. All right, so let's read about the uh, experience of the children of Israel. Exodus 19, 8. Then all the people answered it together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And I put the number six there because that is the number of a man. That's Ezekiel 43, 7. And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. No more shall the house of Israel defile my holy name, they nor their kings, by their harlotry or the carcasses of their kings on their high places. When they set their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost by my doorpost, with a wall between them and me, they defiled by holy name by the abominations which they have committed. Therefore I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put their harlotry, that's the number six, and the carcasses of their kings far away from me, and I... That's the number one, will dwell in their midst forever. Son of man, describe the temple to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. Okay, so in the vision of Revelation, John saw this chasm that we are unable to cross, the chasm between the number six and the number seven. And Paul also had the same similar despair. So Revelation 5, 1, And I saw in the book of in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, scroll written inside and out, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or in the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or even to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or, or to look at it. And if the story would have ended there, there would be no salvation for us, friends. So Romans 7.21, 
I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good, for I delight in the law of God according to the inner man. But I see another law, that's a law according to the flesh, the Ten Commandments in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? So we see the despair and the anguish that we are never going to meet the standard as long as we are the number six. So the next question is, how can we move from that number to the number seven, which is perfection? And the answer is, when I die, there is no more I, but there's only Christ. When we die to self, we are thereby released from the condemnation of the law. Praise God. Romans 7, 1. Or do you not know, brethren, for I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives. For the woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if the husband dies, she's released from the law of her husband. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another. So that the law has dominion over a man as long as he lives, but if he dies to self, he's released from the law. So Romans 6.10, and that, that has to do with the state of grace. So Romans 6.10, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.10 But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So Paul has a very important concept there. It's not our work. It is Christ's work through us. And that is a very important distinction. If we die to self, we can't talk about our, quote, relationship with God uh, or relationship with Jesus Christ. It is him doing the work. And if we are dead to self, then we do not exist any longer spiritually. When we die to self, we will be joined to Jesus Christ. The two become one. The beautiful symbology of the wedding, the bride of Christ and Christ. What are the blessings of the union of man and Jesus? That's the six and the one together. Through Jesus, the wall, the law, will come crashing down. Exodus 21, 2. If you buy Hebrew servant, he shall serve for six years. That's serving, that's the works-based salvation. And it's also the number of a man. And in the seventh, he shall go free and pay nothing. Friends, this has to do with the grace and the freedom that comes from not being under the law. So Joshua 6.1, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. The Lord said to Joshua, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. That was the work of man. And seven priests shall bear seven uh, trumpets of ram's horn before the ark, which is a symbol for the, the saved. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the priests, these are remnant, they will blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. When we look at the ram's horn, we see that the horn in um, prophecy symbols, it represents power. The ram is Jesus, the ram caught in the thicket. So the ram's horn, that's the power of the Spirit of Christ. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall, or the law of the city, that's uh, Galatians 4, Jerusalem from below, will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. So it's a very cool typological uh, study there, and I recommend that you continue to read on that. So let's move on. Jesus does his work through us, and we are able to give the final message of the fourth angel of Revelation 18. So, and I heard another angel from heaven crying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Uh, Ezekiel 9.1, Then he called out to me with a hearing, with a loud voice, saying, Let those who have charge of the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces towards the north, each with a battle axe in his hand. 
One man among them was clothed with linen, of course this is Jesus, with a writer's inkhorn at his side. They went and stood beside the bronze altar. We see that with the six men, they are united with one. Six plus one, that equals the perfection of being united with Christ. And uh, the next slide uh, kind of expounds on that point. The union of six and one is present throughout Scripture, especially in the Sabbath and the sanctuary truce. There are seven steps in the north and south outer gate. That is the symbolism of our dying to self and our being united with Christ. Exodus 29, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Ezekiel 46, 1, Thus said the Lord God, The gateway of the inner court that faces toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open. Ezekiel 40, 22, Its windows and those of its arches and its palm trees had the same measurements as the gateway facing east. It was ascended by seven steps, that's the north gate, and its archway was in the front. Seven steps led up to it, and its archway was in the front of them. And it had palm trees on the gate posts, one on this side and one on that side. So that is the southern gate. All right, so let's transition a little bit here. Don't be one of the synagogue of Satan who love to keep their brethren in bondage through the old covenant. Jeremiah 34, 14, At the end of seven years, let every man set his Hebrew brother free. Who who had sold to him, and when he served for you six years, you shall let him go free with you. But your fathers did not obey me, nor incline their ear. Galatians 2, 3, Not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they may bring us into bondage. Matthew 15, 10, when he had called the multitude himself, he said, Hear and understand, not what goes into the man defiles him, but what comes out of him. Jesus is absolutely obliterating the idea of clean and unclean meats. He's explaining the symbolic value there. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you not know the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? All right, so the last slide here. What about 666 power, the beast, the Roman Catholic Church, the papacy? So we have Satan, we have the beast, and the wicked. Three parts which are all united together against Christ. They don't submit to Jesus, which means they don't die to self. So they, in individual parts, they represent the number six. So there, um, through Satan is six, the beast is six, and the wicked is six. So there we have a one aspect of 666. Uh, so let's read about the three parts of the city of Babylon, Revelation 16, 19. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nation fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So let's look at another aspect of the 666, part one. We have 586 B.C., the destruction of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar. God's professed people who clung to the old covenant and works-based salvation. They were weighed in the balance and found wanting. That was six. Part two, 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem. God's professed people who clung to the old covenant and works-based salvation. They were weighed in the balances and found wanting. That's another six. Part three, which is still in the future, the second coming. God, again, God's professed people, they were still clinging to the Old Covenant and works-based salvation. They will be weighed in the balances and found wanting. And what is Christ's response to this 666? Ezekiel 21, 25. Now to you, O profane, wicked prince of Israel, typology, this is certainly Satan, whose day has come, whose iniquity shall end. Thus says the Lord, remove the turban and take off the crown. Nothing shall remain the same. Exalt the humble and humble the exalted. Overthrown, overthrown, overthrown for the three parts of Babylon. It shall be no longer until he comes whose right it is and I will give it to him. So I pray that you'll continue to study these things and come out of her, my people. Blessings to you in the name of Jesus.